are we on the verge of seeing one of the most powerful indicators that a recession may be on the horizon? Tune into the rest of this video to find out what that indicator is and how it's impacted the markets in the past. The U.S. markets were relatively stagnant last week, with the Russell 2000 leading the way up about a half a percent. All the U.S. indices that we track are still positive year to date. Foreign and emerging markets had a mixed bag, but also not a lot of activity there, with foreign stocks up about 0.6 percent. And foreign and emerging market stocks both negative for the year, with foreign down around 1 percent and emerging markets still down around 6 percent for the year. Before we get to the chart of the week today, I'm going to talk a little bit about interest rates and the graph in front of us today shows current interest rates, which is the red line, compared to interest rates a year ago, which is the yellow line. As you can see on the chart, the whole way to the left on the short-term interest rates, those have been rising pretty drastically compared to long-term rates, which are the far right of the graph. The reason of this is because the Fed has mentioned multiple times that they're going to be raising interest rates last year into this year and moving forward, and that has a drastic impact on short-term rates, but we haven't seen that transition to the long-term rates yet. In the chart of the week now, I'm going to be explaining to you exactly what that means for the economy and discussing what's called the yield curve. Now we're looking at the yield curve, and the yield curve is the spread between the two-year and the 10-year treasuries. As you can see at the far right of the chart, the current spread between the two and the 10 year is about 0.3%. And this means that if the two year yield is around two and a half percent, that the 10 year is at 2.8%. Now a flat yield curve is okay for the economy and actually signals modest growth, but an inverted yield curve, which means that the two year yield is higher than the 10 year yield is actually a bad signal for the economy. In fact, if you look at the red line and the wording underneath it, an inverted yield curve has actually led to the past seven recessions. If you look at the last time the yield curve was inverted, that was in 2007, 2008. And the current chart looks a lot like it did in the mid 1990s, right before the early 2000s recession. So as of now, with a flattening yield curve, everything looks okay in the economy as there's still modest growth. But we're keeping a very close eye to see if this yield curve does go inverted because that could spell trouble for the economy moving forward. Last week's news kicked off in Finland, where President Trump met with Vladimir Putin to discuss various issues. And we didn't see a whole lot of market impact from this summit yet, but we're going to be watching oil closely along with any trade discussions between the United States and Russia going forward. Also last week, the current sitting Fed chair, Jerome Powell, told lawmakers that he thinks the economy remains strong and he's going to keep the rate hikes coming. In response to that, President Trump came out taking a strong stand saying that he does not want to see any more interest rate hikes and that interest rate hikes take the competitive advantage away for his trade negotiations with the European Union and China. Later in the week, President Trump doubled down on his comments to the Fed, saying that we shouldn't be penalized for doing so well. And tightening right now could hurt everything that we've accomplished. Now, this is pretty unprecedented, and we usually don't see a president publicly pressuring the Federal Reserve in regards to interest rates. And actually, the last time that we've seen a president publicly come out and talk to the Fed about interest rates was in 1992, when President Bush came out and said that he would like to see interest rates decrease. Last week, 87 of the 500 S&P 500 companies reported their second quarter earnings, and so far so good, 84% of those companies beat the market expectation. And this week, we have 175 of the 500 companies reporting, and that's including three of the five largest market cap companies, Facebook, Amazon, and Google. Thanks for watching. We strive to give you everything that you need to know about the markets in five minutes or less. Like our Facebook page and share our video. We'll see you guys next week.